Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to part seven of my Logic Pro 11 Mixing Fundamentals course. In this video, we're gonna focus on cleaning up the Tom tracks using Logic Pro's Remove Silence feature. This used to be called Strip Silence in old versions of Logic. This allows you to isolate the Tom hits by cutting out all of the bleed from the cymbals, hi-hats, and other drums. Ultimately, this will get us a more tight, controlled Tom sound in the mix. So this process helps eliminate unwanted noise in the tom mics, especially during sections where the toms aren't being played. Just keep in mind that removing silence on tom tracks isn't always necessary. It really depends on the genre and the production style you're going for. In a more natural or live sounding mix, leaving a bit of bleed can actually help the kit feel more cohesive and realistic. And one last thing before we get started, we've already covered drum replacement and doubling on the kick and snare drums in the previous two videos. And in this video, I will do a little drum replacement on the toms as well, although it's more of a secondary step, so I'll do that portion off screen. So in a song like this, where the toms are really not used that often, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, there's approximately 10 places where the toms are being used. Sometimes it helps to remove the audio in between those tom fills. And let me show you what I mean. If I just solo my three tom tracks. That's a lot of cymbal bleed. And what I'll often do is I'll just listen to the track with and without the tom tracks in, not even listening for the toms. I'm just listening to how the bleed of the tom tracks affects the mix of the rest of the drums. Yeah, I don't want all that extra bleed in there. It's affecting the clarity of the cymbals. Now, one way to do this is you can just go through and just manually edit out all of the sections where the toms are. So you can just use your marquee tool like this. I just like to leave a little bit of room at the beginning of each tom hit or each you know run of tom hits. And I can do maybe something like this. I, I like to be a little more liberal about how much of the tail I leave. I don't want to, you know, trim things up too short. And so these mics are only going to come in where these regions are. And so we can maintain that clarity in, in the overheads and then the cymbals. Another way to do this is you can use Logic's strip silence or remove silence feature. I like to test this out on a small section. So just isolate a small section and then select that region and press control X. This will bring up the remove silence dialog. Everything you see here in blue is something that's going to be kept and everything that's grayed out here or sort of dimmed out is gonna be removed. And so you affect this by pulling up or down the threshold. And so if I raise the threshold, you can see we can isolate just those two toms. You can also adjust the post release time to make sure you keep some of the tom tails in there. And then when you have two notes next to each other, you don't necessarily want to separate these. So you can pull up the minimum time to accept a silence to get rid of those separations. And you can even add in a little bit of a pre-attack time if you like, then click OK. And then what you can do is once you set that once, you can select a long region here like this, and it remembers those settings. So I can apply that to all of Tom 1, all of Tom 2, except here you can see there's some separations. So let's pull up that minimum time to accept the silence. There we go. And then we'll do the same thing on the floor Tom. And there we go. And then we can just go through and kind of do the same thing we just did to these first two Toms. Just make sure there's enough tail to let the Toms ring out and then just add a long fade out and then a short fade in. move over here. I don't even think this, yeah, this isn't even a tom. That's just a, a little snippet that was left in there. So we can just delete those. Here's a fill where all three toms are used. Yeah, since there's just silence there, let's go ahead and just pull that out. If you forgot how to create fades, you can just hold shift and control and then drag over the beginning or end of a region. And then I'll just kind of go through each of these tom areas 
delete any ones that are erroneous like this, and then just edit up all of the ones that are not. Okay, so I've gone through all of my tom fills and isolated them and faded them. Again, honestly, I could probably just leave these toms as is and just work with them the way they are. You can certainly do that if you want. But I'm going to take this one step further and layer up some tom samples with these. I'm mainly going to rely on the sound of the original toms, but I do want to put some samples in there just for a little extra punch. You've already seen me do drum replacement in the previous two videos, so I'm not going to demonstrate all of that over again. So I'll just do this off screen and I'll be right back. Okay, so tom replacement is done. You can see I have three tom tracks still, plus three software instrument tracks with MIDI regions for the sample replacement. I'm gonna do something a little different here. I'm going to first bounce each of the replacer tracks as audio, but the thing is now I have two tom tracks for each tom. That's gonna make mixing a heck of a lot more complicated. So I can either just deal with it and mix them this way. I can put each pair of tom tracks in its own track stack, or I can use the join function to create a stereo mix down of the tom mics and replacer tracks. So essentially I'm merging the tom one mic and the tom one replacer track together, and then I'm doing the same for tom two and tom three. It's completely up to you how you choose to do it, but this is how I'm going to do it just for simplicity's sake. Just select all of the regions on both channels, press J, and then create a stereo mix down. And so now I can get rid of those original tracks. So I'm left with these stereo tom tracks. And what I like to do is switch these over to stereo pan and then repan them as I did before. Pretty good. All good there. The first and second tom really sound good. Third tom is always weird because you get a lot of crash. If you put your china over on the right side of the kit, you're going to get a lot of the china in there too. You're going to get a lot of ride cymbal in that tom. So third tom is often uh, kind of difficult to mix just for that reason. Okay, so that is how I edit the cymbal bleed and enhance my tom tracks in a rock mix. In the next video, we're going to move on to drum mix routing. We'll talk about pre-fader metering for mixing and adding EQ to the drum tracks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.